You make waste as in the dirty, yes. As in waste, as in a big, uh, a big waste. So I'm going to tell you what the waste museum is about. But I just wanted to share this story of that energy of the youth and the experience of the elders. How many minutes do I have? Because I can talk from now to tomorrow. How many minutes? 30. Huh? 30 minutes. 30 minutes, okay. So that I can know how to plan. Prof has told us that we should do. Don't worry, I mean, negotiate later. That's why Prof also told us how to negotiate. You know? So while I was interacting with the women, I was sharing uh, the plants that we have at the museum with them, what we use some of the plants for, the ones that we planted, and the ones that came by themselves. You know this plant that you call weed? Most of the plants that you call weed, you call them weed because if you ask Prof now that what's the definition of weed, Prof will say they from one dead plant. I don't know what scholars will call it. But do you know that most of the things that we call weeds are actually the herbs, the natural remedies that we need to treat most of the ailments that is wrong with us. But because we don't know, we lack the knowledge, and so we are suffering for lack of knowledge. But that does not change the ability of the plants or the weeds to do whatever they want to do in us. So I was sharing with the women, and because I was sharing, guess what happened? By the time I told them about one, two, three, four of the plants, they now started to remember, and then they started raising up their hands one by one, and they were like, oh, I remember. My grandpa used to use this particular leaf, and this is what they use it for. And then they started sharing. And those were some of the things that we have lost. Absolutely. Our grandpas, great great grandpas, they have different knowledge of some of these plants that they would just go to their backyard and they would take and they would use and it will work. But over the years, we became knowledgeable and too knowledgeable for ourselves. So when they are talking, we don't listen. And so most of them took this knowledge to the grave. And who is, who is, who is suffering from it now? Is we. And that's the reason why this kind of discussion must not be just once a year. It must be something we have even if it is monthly. So that we can all share knowledge. So that we can all work minds together. Because I'm sure from your country, from your state, from the village that you come from. There's something you are doing in that village. There's something you are using in that village that somebody else did about the leaves. Because that same leaf, there's a particular leaf that grows around a community that is needed. That plant doesn't come out if nobody needs it. It only comes, anytime you see that plant, somebody around needs it. But because we don't know, whoever is supposed to use it doesn't even know. So when that person is going through that problem, they will either go to the hospital or they will go and take whatever it is that they don't want to take. Do you understand that? But God has blessed us so much. And so, what do we do at the West Museum? And let me tell you this. This was not what I studied in school. So, when I see Prof and my other Prof to talking, and we're talking about soil sciences, talking about food science, they are privileged because they have the opportunity to know the theory. Welcome, sir. You're welcome, sir. My guy is here. <laughs> You're welcome, sir. You know, now they are privileged to have the theories of what we learned in the practical. I didn't do a week in school. I did not do biology, I did not do soil, but in life, I stumbled on it. I fell in love with it, and I started doing it, and it started blessing me. And after a while, it not only started blessing me, it started blessing other people around me. Because whatever God has given you, is not for you alone to use, you're actually supposed to bless your world. So whatever gift that God has given to you, if you think it is for yourself alone, you, know, you are just being selfish. Nurture it, hold it, work on it, use it well. And the day it will be a blessing to your world, you will be shocked. And then you will be looking at yourself, ah, give me now. This knowledge or information that I think is not useful. And that may be what will save somebody else's life. 
So I didn't study admin in school. I didn't study science in school. I didn't even study environment like my other people that are doing environment and doing all this thing. It was just life. You know, life teaches us lessons. And when life is teaching you that lesson, if you don't listen, is that you miss it? You will miss the purpose. You will miss the function that that lesson is supposed to give to you and to others. So life taught me. I stumbled on plants and gardens. I started with flowers. And on that three months that I stumbled on the training, I had over 50 different kinds of flowers that are used for different things. Then one day I wanted to eat about them. And I realized that the only vegetable in my garden is moringa leaf. I do not have okra, I do not have shoko, I do not have pepe. So I'm like, ah, how can I have almost over 50 plants and flowers? Pop out all my space, and there's no way to. By then, there was no more space. So the following day, I went to the market and I bought containers. And I planted shoko, okra, a way to. And on that one month, God has blessed us in this part of the world so much that there's no seed. Even the ones you wash, you go to market, you buy pepper, you wash it, and then you pour the waste water out. Seed will come out from it. Plants will grow from it. But most of the time, what do we do? We will remove it. We don't want it. I mean, that's not what we do. So I planted in pots, and I started feeding my family. Very soon it was too much, so I started calling my neighbors to come and get fresh vegetables. That was how the whole thing started. From growing like that, it became bigger. I started supplying moringa seeds. I started helping my neighbors to start their own gardens. And along the line, I discovered another passion. And the other passion I discovered is waste. The waste from my kitchen. I realized that there's an interconnection, not only between the plants. But the way God has created it, one of our prophets mentioned it, that God created plants, animals. Then he created man. And he said, man, go and dominate. Not only dominate, go and nurture. Go and take care. So we have the power to nurture the earth, nurture the environment, take care of the animals. But along the line, we became very knowledgeable again. I was started creating things that are destructive to the same environment that God has kept us in charge to take care of. So we started creating different things. We created industries, we had factories, and they would come out with smokes, and they would kill the animals. They would even give us two diseases, isn't it? And it kept going on, and it kept going on, and it kept going on like that. And we started creating different products. On our tables now, we have plastic bottles. Each of these plastic bottles have a liquid content. Once we are done on the table now, we will take the liquid content and then we will do what with the bottle? We will throw it away. I like that statement. Each time you throw away, let me ask you my question now. Where is the way? The environment. Is it that in the landfill? In the gutters? Some people throw it out of their cars, isn't it? You've seen people driving good cars or beautifully good cars. Then they will take this and then they will fling it out of their windows on the streets. Who should come and pick it? Shehima Mide? No, I don't understand. When you are driving your car and you bought a bottle of Coke and you are done taking your bottle of Coke and then you flung the bottle of Coke out from your car. Please, who did you fling it out for to pick it for you? Is it our governor that should come and pick the bottle for you? Or is it Reverend Man? Maybe I don't want to pick the bottles out. And do you know that each of these bottles that you are flinging out from your car, it will take over 450 years for this to violate the grid. So let's count it. Prof is 70 plus now, and he wants to be to 100 or 120. How many years? 100 is okay.
And if this plastic bottle does not biodegrade for the next 4 50 years, that means if bro finish shaking this sprout in front of him and he tosses it to the environment, it will take props, children's 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 children. Let's say all the children to be 100 years. That's how many generations? At least five generations. So let's begin to think like that. So you take this bottle, you use it today, and some of us buy this thing like four in a day. Some buy three in a day. And once you are done, you just do what? Go away. So our mission at the Waste Museum is very simple. We are on a mission to create a sustainable world without waste. And our solution is simple. We call it our five R's and a U. So say it after me, five R's and a U. So let's say it together, reduce, reuse, recycle, refuse, repair, and upcycle. So let's take it again, reduce, reuse, recycle, refuse, repair, and upcycle. Now when you look at those six words, they are what you must begin to do every day, not monthly. You know, sometimes the government will say every Thursday come out for sanitation and come and clean. And most times you don't see anybody on the road, isn't it? It is not what you do every Thursday. It's not what you do every month. It is what you must do every day. Now, I mentioned plants, animals, and humans. The next thing I'm going to be telling you today is called circular economy. Presently, the whole world is using linear economy. So linear, let's go together. Somebody produce. Let's go together. Say produce. You call you purchase. You consume. And then you throw it away. So let's do it. Somebody produce. You purchase. You consume. And then you throw it away. You can see that it is straight. So each one, everything you are throwing away, what happens to them? Father took me to the back, and then I saw the landfill for the Dominican University. And I, and I, was, I was showing him, we were analyzing. We said, okay, look at this landfill now. Every single thing that is on that landfill, or, or, no, we're not calling that landfill, we call it top size. Everything, every single material that is on that top size, can be repurposed, can be reused, can be recycled. But because we don't sort, we don't segregate, everybody is not a drop or a dustbin. And what you do is, this morning you just finish taking your popcorn, you drop the bottle there. In the afternoon you make vegetable, so you have your vegetable pills, you carry your vegetable stock, you have it there. In the evening you took Eba, and Eba was remaining. So you pack your Eba, and you throw it inside that same drum. On that three days, what happens to that drum? It starts to smell. And so what do you do? You now be looking for who will come and help you to carry it. Now if you don't carry it on time, some of us, what do we do? We carry it to the backyard, and then we put fire on it. Do you know that it is? In Oyo State Law, you must not burn your refuse. We're supposed to come and be arresting everybody that is born. So, how many of you deserve arrest here today? You are born, your are is one way or the other. That is the law. We are not supposed to, anybody that is born, their refuse should be caught and arrested and jailed. But because our governor is still very dead to and they have not started the enforcing the law, most of the laws that we have in the land, if they enforce a quarter of it, our land will be better already. We have good laws. It is the enforcement that is the problem. That is the issue. We have good laws. So, but imagine you have a bag and the only thing you put there is plastic bottles and cans. You know they are all dry. If you put your cans and plastic bottles inside the bag, will it smell? Now, imagine you have another bag and you put all your paper, your waste that generates in your house and you put the paper inside that bag. And then imagine you have another bucket. All the food waste, that is the wet waste, 
Those were the ones that always smells, isn't it? Because they are the ones that will want to decompose and it will start smelling because they will move from one stage to another stage. So imagine you put all those ones too in another bucket. And do you know that all those ones can naturally by yourself be composted? You can turn them to compost that you can use to plant your organic backyard. I'm an advocate of every home planting their own garden. Every family that is more than one must grow their own food and grow their own medicine. Should I take it again? Every home must grow their own food and grow their own medicine. Because most of the things you need, if you are not sick, most of the things you need for your health, they are growing at your backyard. All you need to do is to intentionally incorporate them into your meals and they will fortify you. They will boost your immunity and you will just realize that you don't fall sick, you don't go to the hospitals. But if you ask yourself now, in the last one week, how many fresh organic, I'm not talking about the ones you buy in the market that has been sprayed with them. But I was saying, beside me, he said, we don't use chemical. I said, yes, sir. That is the future. And that's what we're supposed to do now. Most of the vegetables and pepper you are buying in the market, the farmers are spraying with chemicals, but they don't want pests to eat it. When they bring it to the market and your oil is half eaten, will you buy it? If they bring the oil leaf for you now and half of it has been eaten by pests, will you buy? You won't buy now. So they will spray very well for you so that you will not say nothing will eat. But those chemicals are the ones killing us. So at the museum, we decided to showcase Secular economy. So, you know, I, I explained what's been here the other time. So, now we want the world to move from linear economy to secular economy. And what is the difference? Secular economy means zero waste. And do you know it is possible? Do you believe it is possible? Because if you don't believe it is possible, then you will not walk towards it. I'm here to tell you today that secular economy is not a talk. It is a lifestyle. It is a lifestyle. You must live it every day. Do you understand that now? You must live secular economy every day. And what does it mean? Make sure that every product, everything you do, you always ask yourself, where is it going to end? What is the life cycle? What if I throw this away now? Where is the way? So you must reduce, reuse, Recycle, refuse, repair, and upcycle. So at the West Museum, we are showcasing secular economy of plants, animals, and humans living together without generating waste. Our space is very small, it's not even up to one plot. And we have, presently now, we have over 155 plants that are for food, for medicine, for air purifying, and ornamentals. We also have animals that are bringing, giving us waste that we're using on the plants. And we have events and artworks all created for waste. And guess what? It is the first in the world, right here in the city of Ibadan. And here. So I'm here to tell you this morning that secular economy as a lifestyle is possible. All we need to know is to be intentional about what we do with our waste and do it every day. Thank you so very much. God bless is a wow. Because you can see a conglomerate of great minds coming together from the older ones to the younger ones to even the ones that we could call the ones in the middle. And you know, when you have the synergy of this variation of talents, experiences, strengths coming together to discuss one of my favorite topics, which is agriculture. You can be very sure that it's a great conference for me. Uh, interest first and needs. I got interested. I was um, 
I was accidentally at a training where they were training, we were supposed to be training widows. I was not supposed to be there to learn anything about agriculture. My own job there was to do opening prayer and closing prayer. After I'm done, you know, I have that free moment that I could walk around in between the classes. So I was walking around one day and then I stumbled on the class for the um, flower arrangement and that was how I developed love for flowers. So I started with flowers and then I started growing flowers, started collecting flowers. Then one day I wanted to eat tamala and I realized I didn't have any vegetables in my garden so it was actually need i needed to have that you know right at my backyard and that was how it started so from planting a widow and shoko yokoto and green it's due to you know what we have right now whereby we have at least over 155 species of plants that is ranging from food to herbs to ornamentals and to help with fires at the whiskey so. is sustainable it's always sustainable you know and the kind of agriculture that i do is even what i will call organic backyard gardens which is um you know i'm advocating for every home and every family to grow their own food and grow their own herbs i cannot count the amount of money i've been able to save because i have you know vegetable garden behind my back uh, during corona we were not going anywhere we were stuck at home I, I was able to feed my family from my garden. I was able to also build the immunity of my family because every day we were taking teas from the garden, we were taking herbs from the garden, we were taking, you know, drinks from the garden. If anybody is sick, we're going to the garden, we harvest. And because we were doing that, our immunity was stronger. We were, my children that used to fall sick and have malaria every month, they were no longer having malaria, we were no longer buying drugs for malaria. Why? Because we were taking preventions, you know, from the from the garden so if i want to begin to put value to how much agriculture and starting a backyard garden has helped me even me alone as a family i cannot begin to put measure of cash to it because if i say four years now i have not spent any money in the hospital for any of my four to five children you know calculate how much that alone is so when we're talking about sustainability we're talking about life we're talking about you know um making sure that it's it lasts beyond us my children now bring their home, their friends to the house and their friends will be complaining of things and my children will go into the garden, pick a leaf, pick this and give it to their children, give it to their friends and the friends will go back home and tell their parents and the parents will come. So what are you talking about? It's sustainable, that is life, that is future and we're already putting it into the lives of these children. And so the children too also know, so even when I'm not around that they're going through any issues, they know the kind of leaves to take, they know to give, what to give their friends and so they're already passing it on. So it's sustainable, it's life. The speaker was talking about the fact that um, why will you say there's no work or there's no job when we have you know acres of and we have different things around you know that people can use to you know engage themselves i will tell the youth today that the youth should discover themselves the youth should be ready to they should um, get up and get going you know let's not talk too much let's not complain too much let's not blame the past the future the present too much Let's ask ourselves, where are we right now? What do we have now? And where can we use it? And everybody's got something. Every youth that I know, they have the energy, they can work smarter, they have the social media, they have the digital, they have the techie to help. There's, I was at a conference yesterday and I was telling this, when somebody was saying, yeah, we are not creative, and I'm like, everybody's creative. If we're talking about waste, we're talking about garden, it's not everybody that will go into the garden. It's not everybody that will carry waste. But everybody's got something. Some people have very blessed with speaking skills. Some people are blessed with writing skills. Whatever it is that you are blessed with, use it in your capacity. You don't have to be like me. You don't have to plant a garden if you don't want to plant a garden. But you can write about it. You can educate other people about it. And it is when you are trying to give a voice to whatever gift that God has given you, that is when the um, recognition, the money, or anything, any, any other thing you think you're looking for, that is when it will come. I say to my youth around me, I say, work, learn, and hand. It comes in that order work hand and work learn and hand but they want to end before working it doesn't it's not going to work you must work you must learn then earning will run after you that's what i tell you everybody can continue to talk it is when we start putting action to our talk that it becomes very effective talk is cheap Talk is cheap. We have arable lands. Every home 
have good lands. There's no land in Nigeria that you cannot put seed that it will not grow. We are so blessed. Let everybody begin to look in. Imagine if every home is going their vegetables, going their own fruits. Imagine if I can come to your house and exchange the fruit you have in your house for the fruit I have in my house. Imagine if I don't have to go to the market to go and say I'm looking for fruit. Imagine if I visit five of my friends and I can get all the fruit needs that I need for you all week. Tell me, what does it cost? You see homes, big homes that they have lawns, then they will grow grass that's not productive to them and they will not plant any fruit tree or any crop tree. So let's begin to walk the talk. Let every home grow their own fruit. Let every home grow their own trees. No matter how small your space is, you can grow purple. If it is only purple you have, if I have coconut, I can exchange coconut from you for purple. Let's go back to trade by butter. Everything is not about currency of cash, cash, cash. Uh, dollar is rising, Naira is falling, everything is going up. If we stop all this importation mentality, consumer mentality, all those things, they are not useful. If you are growing your food, you realize that the things you are buying every day or every week will even reduce. Because everything is not about cash, it's about exchange. You have what I need, you, I have what you need. Then we exchange. It's a win-win. Let everybody sit up and walk the talk.